3D printing is amazing and it's truly an endless possibility in and of itself. You can virtually make anything with a 3D printer. Hey, my name is Ashley and this channel is Chip Builds and welcome to my 3D printing 101 series. So let's get started. Okay, so now that our 3D printer has arrived, it's time to unbox it and set it up. I ended up going with the Ender 2 for this series just because it's small and it's pretty good quality printer and on the cheaper side. And I think this printer is perfect for if you're trying to figure out if you even like 3D printing, if you want to get involved in it, or just kind of see what it's about because you don't really want to break the bank on a hobby that you might not even like down the road. I'll leave a link down below to where I got this on Amazon. There's a bunch of different stores that sell it. Some sellers have better reviews than others. I went with this one and it came in this nice little box. It's a pretty compact size. So let's start opening it up. So you're gonna need a box cutter or something and to just remove the tape from this box. And then now we can open it and see what's inside. So typically when you buy a 3D printer off of Amazon especially, it comes really nicely packed. And it looks like we got a foam cover, nice. All right, and it looks like we have our instruction booklet. That's awesome. And then we have a after service card. So you'll wanna keep these things for sure. Just put that to the side. Looks like we have our accessories and parts in this bag. And then in here we have our filament spool holder. Set that off to the side. We have our LCD screen. That looks pretty good. I'm not a huge fan of these, this big old red button. And then we have our power cord. And then now we can get rid of this foam layer on top. So now this is where you need to kind of start to be careful when you're taking out a 3D printer. Sometimes they have different wires attached to like the gantry and the bed and you don't want to pull something out of there aggressively and potentially rip or strip any wires or anything. So you just got to be careful and kind of assess and use your best judgment. So right here in the box we have the X and Y gantry. And as we can see we have wires that are attached to the power supply. And so I'm just gonna kind of hold this up like this and just kind of set it aside and just kind of assess what else I need to get out of here at the same time. I'm gonna remove some of this foam padding just to make it a little easier to get to these areas. This, I could pull this out. This is the handle, set that to the side. So, this, so it looks like this whole thing is connected and so what we need to do is we need to bring it out all as one piece, which can be kind of tricky. Uh, you know, feel free to have someone help you take it out. It's not the end of the world. It's, uh, it's packed in here pretty nice and snug. So I just kind of pull away at this and then holding both of these parts, lift it out. And then I'll set these to the side and then I can move the box out of the way. Okay, so in the accessories pack, we have some clippers here. And this is really good for cutting off filament or removing support material from your project. So those are really handy. Comes with a Creality certificate, qualified certificate. That doesn't really matter. And then in here we have all our parts. So here we have the USB adapter and the micro SD card. Uh, the micro SD card is what we'll put our G-code files on to print on the 3D printer. It comes with a needle. This is used so that you can unclog the nozzle for if it gets jammed. And it comes with a little protective piece of foam for you to put the end in since it's pretty sharp. It comes with a little baggie of spare parts. We got some spare couplers and a spare nozzle, which is really nice. We have our bolts all the different sizes that we need. And then it comes with a little bag of tools. It comes with some Allen wrenches, uh, two spanner wrenches, and a flathead screwdriver. So these are pretty handy to have for when you're doing maintenance on the 3D printers. It also comes with a sample spool of filament. This honestly isn't the best. I typically just throw it out, but for this video, just so I can show you guys what it can do, we'll use this. Um, it's just a cheap kind of no brand 
Now I would definitely save the box for at least a couple months just to make sure that there's nothing wrong with your machine and that you have to send it back. So now that we have this 3D printer unboxed, we can go ahead and start assembling it. And one of the reasons why I chose this printer to show off is because all it's gonna take is four screws to put this together. A lot of 3D printers come as kits in various stages of assembly. Some have it where like absolutely nothing is assembled and you spend hours putting it together. And some are like this where it's like four or eight screws and it takes like 30 minutes. So that's one thing that you're gonna have to think about what you wanna do. For a part of the 3D printing hobby, do you wanna have that step of like putting it together, tinkering with it? Or do you want a machine quote unquote plug and play? So that's kind of up to you and you might need to do some more research for the right 3D printer for you. So when you're building a 3D printer, one thing you always wanna make sure that you do is look at the manual and follow the instructions. This is not the kind of machine where you can kind of just say, forget the instructions, I'm just gonna go for it. Uh, you really need to follow what the company says, that way it will just work properly. And then that way, if there is an issue, it won't come back on you where the company will say, hey, we're not gonna fix it because you put it together incorrectly when we gave you the correct documentation. So just one tip, really make sure you're reading the documentation as well as you can sometimes companies they don't give great documentation and you might have to turn to different YouTube videos to kind of figure out what you need to do so before I begin assembly on any 3d printer that I own I do this one thing first to make sure that I don't ruin the printer right out of the gate so what you need to do before you do anything else after you've unboxed it is you need to check the power supply and check what voltage it is. A lot of the times, at least in my experience, the voltage is coming for other countries. So typically I'll get the 3D printer and the power supply is at 230. We don't want that, which 230 might be fine in the country that you live, but I live in America and so I need to flip it to 115. And so sometimes it's kind of hard to get in there. And so you can just use like an Allen wrench or ice pick or whatever, and just flip that switch. So now the power supply is gonna put out 115 volts and it's gonna be good and I'm not gonna fry my 3D printer. So after I've checked to make sure the power supply is in the right voltage, the next thing I check before I start the assembly process is the bed of the 3D printer. If there's any kind of wobble, or play in the bed before it's even assembled, you're gonna have a really hard time getting successful prints and it, you're just gonna have a bad time. So what I like to do is I will just put a hand on each side of the bed and really like wiggle it and see if it's moving and just double check that there's no play and that I can continue on in the assembly. If there is play in the bed of the 3D printer, then all you have to do is tighten a couple bolts. But so this seems pretty good out of the factory, so I'm not gonna mess with it. Okay, so now we can attach the X and Y gantry to the bed, and we're gonna do that with two screws. What I like to do is just hand insert the screws at first, just to really get them in there, and then that way you're not like fighting with the Allen wrench and trying to get the bolt to get on there correctly. We're gonna use this Allen wrench to tighten up all the bolts. And for when you're first starting off tightening the bolts, you can just use the long skinny side of the Allen wrench and that will be fine. When we go to do our final cranks of the bolt to really tighten it down, then we're gonna to wanna to use the other side because we do not wanna strip these screws because then you're just not gonna have a good time. I like to switch between each bolt as I tighten it. That way one side doesn't get warped as we tighten it down. So these are both in there really well. And so now I'm gonna take this side of the Allen wrench, gonna put it in here, and then just gonna crank it down. I'm not gonna go crazy to strip it or break the Allen wrench or anything, but I'm gonna do this just to make sure, oh, that still had a little more to go, just to make sure that everything's looking good and that we're not gonna, anything's gonna come out. All right, so that's good by me and it's looking pretty good so far. And so now we can move on to the next part. So now we're gonna unscrew the last two screws into the main part of the 3D printer. So we're gonna put two screws in the bottom and that's gonna secure the X and Y gantry to the base of the printer. And again, we're gonna do that same process with the Allen wrench and the bolts where we're gonna just kind of get them up in there and then use the curved end to do the final tightness down. Again, I'm just alternating between each bolt, that way nothing gets warped 
Um, a lot of issues that people kind of tend to have with printers early on is that they were assembled incorrectly, which is why I stress very much reading the manual properly and just doing everything you can to make sure things are going on straight and square. All right, so now we can do our final quarter turns here. That one's looking good, and now we can do this one. That one is good as also. And so now we can turn our machine back upright. And we're almost done assembling this. Literally, I love this printer because it takes less than 30 minutes to even put it together. Okay, so we have the spool holder here, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this part of the spool holder that actually holds the filament roll, and we're gonna put it in here, and there's some little channels that you gotta line up, and then you just twist, and then now that is assembled. And then the next part we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in here. So now that we've assembled the spool holder, we're gonna put it in here into this channel. And it's a bit of a snug fit. We're just gonna slide it in and line up the holes on the top. And we're gonna take this long silver bolt and we are gonna put this down in here like so. And then we're gonna bust out our Allen wrench so then we're just gonna screw this down. And again, on the very last turn, we're gonna use the other side of the Allen wrench so we don't strip any screws. That seems pretty good to me. And then the cool thing about this printer is that this spool holder moves. Like, that's pretty awesome. So we're almost done putting the machine together. We just have to put this last piece on and then attach all the wires and then we can start printing. So this just goes on the top right here, and this is just a little handle so that you can carry this around. One thing I absolutely love about this printer is its portability. I do a lot of traveling a lot, and whenever I can, I try to bring a 3D printer with me, but it's always kind of awkward and heavy and bigger because I have a lot of bigger printers. So this is gonna be probably my dedicated travel printer, and I'm super excited. And then, so we're just gonna put these little screws in here up here on the top and then now you should have no more screws left if you do that's not good you miss something and you got to go back to the manual and check things out all right so now we can lift that up and so now we can move on to doing all the different wiring that we need and it's a super simple process i say wiring and i know it sounds crazy literally just plugging things into different sockets on the 3d printer and it's really simple okay so in these wires they have a little marker telling you what goes where so this wire says e which is for the extruder and we can plug this in up here so this one says x and that's going to go here like so and then if we keep turning the machine there's one in here and that one is also titled x but it has three prongs and not four and then we are going to get that one in there okay so now we have these bottom two wires and this one is going to go to the z axis and so we're going to plug that one in there and then this one is the Z limit switch and we are gonna plug that one into here. So those are both plugged in. So one of the final pieces we have to attach is the LCD screen and it just has these two little slots which slide into these holes right here which the way that the factory taped this down that's kind of hard to get to so I'm gonna lift this tape just so that I can kind of reposition this. And before I plug that, before I put this in, I'm gonna plug this in. So now that we have that plugged in, we can just put this in the slots and slide it down. So one thing that I do love about this printer is it has a cool little secret hidden compartment that can store all of the tools that you need for when you need to perform maintenance on your 3D printer. So over here on the right side, there is a little tool drawer that you could just pop out. You can load in all of your tools, put your spare parts in there, and then you could just put it back in place. And now they're stored away and you're not gonna lose them and they'll always be here for when you need to perform maintenance on the machine.
Okay, so now that we've turned the machine on and it didn't explode and we're good, we're gonna click this button and go to the menu. And I'm just gonna kind of scroll through the screen here, see what's there. And we're gonna go to motion and then we are gonna go to auto home. And now the printer will do a homing sequence. So now that it's all assembled and we know that it's working, now we can hit this button again and we can go to temperature and I'm gonna heat the bed up to 60 degrees because that is what I typically print at and I'm heating up the bed to 60. That way, when I go to level the bed, I know it's gonna be accurate. You don't wanna level the bed of the 3D printer cold because once it heats up, it's gonna kinda of change its positioning and then you most likely will have your prints fail and it just won't be a good time. Leveling the bed of your 3D printer is something that you're gonna to have to do uh, every so often. Over time, as the printer is moving around and printing things, it will kind of loosen up the bolts that have the bed in place. And so that's just one part of 3D printing. So you really gotta get used to leveling the bed correctly. And to do that, we are gonna use a little piece of copy paper. Okay, so now that we've hit 60 degrees, what we're gonna do is we are gonna go to that motion menu again and do the auto homing sequence one more time, just to make sure we're in the right position. And then now that the printer has auto home, the next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna scroll down to the bottom where it says disable steppers and we're gonna click that. And that's gonna allow us to, to freely move all the planes of the 3D printer. So now we can freely move these about. And so I'm gonna move the bed, be careful because the bed is hot, don't forget. I'm gonna move the bed to roughly this first corner. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip the piece of paper between the nozzle and the bed. And unfortunately with leveling the bed, it's kind of a lot of like what you feel in the moment. So I can't really tell you exactly through the camera like what you need to know or what the best way to use it is. So you kind of just got to feel it out. What you're looking for is you want the nozzle of the printer to just be catching the paper. And if it's just slightly kind of scratching that surface and uh, being able to freely drag, um, then you know that that spot is good and then you can move on to the next one. So actually right off the bat, this is pretty good. I might do like a little micro adjustment. And then we're just gonna move the print head to the next side and then kind of play around until we get that dragging feeling. And then we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go to this other corner and just keep doing our adjustments and feeling. And then we're gonna move to the next one. This one's really tight. As you can see, like that's getting caught on the nozzle. So as you can see, that just freely goes. We don't want that. And sometimes it's very much just like a micro adjustment. And sometimes you need to do like a big knob holes. And just also, again, be careful because when you're doing this, the bed of your 3D printer is hot. Okay, so that one's good. And so I always do this process twice because typically when you adjust one corner, it messes with the other corner. So that feels good to me. And now I'm ready to start my first print. So to clean the bed of the laser, we're just gonna use 91% isopropyl alcohol. I always try to use 91% just cause I like to be extra cautious. And just to make it easier, I put some in this little Dollar Tree spray bottle. And then I'm just gonna spritz the surface like so. And then I have a lint-free uh, cloth. And then I'm just gonna clean it and just make sure all of the oils and dirt and everything is off the bed of the printer. And then we can go on to printing. So for our first test print of the 3D printer, I'm gonna check out and see what kind of test prints the company itself provided. Typically, there's always at least one test print that's already been sliced and ready to go for the printer. So I'm gonna just put the SD card in and then we'll put some filament into the machine and then we can do our first test print. So you can load filament one of two ways. What you can do is you can put it through here once the nozzle has heated up and then you can kind of pinch this lever and then push it through, start to put it through the building tube. But that's kind of hard and you don't really wanna be uh, pushing that too much because uh, you can easily damage it. 
But so you're gonna wanna clip about a 45 degree angle off of your filament. And the route that I went is in the menu, I clicked change filament option. And then that will help assist me to actually get the filament in the right spot. So I'm gonna put it through this hole and just up to these gears and I'm gonna follow the on-screen instructions. And so doing it this way, it heats up the nozzle and then it will tell the gears of the extruder to push out a certain length of filament to get out to the nozzle. So as you can see, the gears are slowly turning and pushing that filament through. And then so as the filament passes through the gears, it goes through the Bowden tube and then it comes out from the nozzle. Now that we have our filament loaded, we can do a test print. All right, so our first test print is done. So let's see. Wow. The quality of this bunny is pretty fantastic considering how cheap this printer is. Now there is some stringing between the ears here and that's just a matter of changing up some settings. We can try and change our retraction settings and see if that will help. Um, there's a couple different things we can try for that. But overall, this thing looks really awesome. And we now know that our printer is working just as it should. In the next episode, I'll show you how to download a slicing program and slice your own models. That way you can print whatever you want. Well guys, thank you so much for watching the first episode in this 3D Printing 101 series. I hope this helped you in choosing a starter 3D printer. There's so many in the market, so feel free to reach out to me and ask questions if you're a little confused still, or if you just need suggestions on some of the other printers that I own. But 3D printing is a super awesome thing to get into, and I really hope this encouraged you to go out and get a 3D printer and start trying. So make sure to stay tuned for the rest of the episodes in this series, and as always, thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.